This Week at NASA. Hey, guys. President Obama spoke with the crews of Space Shuttle Endeavour and the International Space Station from the Roosevelt Room of the White House. I think I speak for all the young people here and uh, everybody back home uh, how proud we are of you, how excited we are uh, about the work that's being done on the space station, uh, and uh, how committed we are to continuing uh, human space exploration uh, in the future. The president discussed their missions with commanders George Zamka and Jeff Williams and their respective STS-130 and Expedition 22 crew members. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. It is a, a large team effort. Uh, in front of you, you have the uh, uh, the joint crew of Endeavour and, uh, and the space station, and we are the ones that are fortunate enough to be able to uh, accomplish this great mission together uh, in space. But there are many thousands of people around the world that get, gave the best of themselves uh, over many years in order to, to have the days that we've been having up here. Mr. Obama noted the ISS's new era of discovery and innovation that'll foster scientific breakthroughs through advances in space research conducted in the station's laboratories. When we do um, cellular research for even, uh, like for cancer research for instance, uh, on Earth the cells actually collapse under their own weight and so it, their growth on Earth are a little bit distorted. Here, without the gravity effect, we can grow cells very purely and understand the mechanisms by which that they are replicating. The president also took special interest in the station's new cupola, the seven-windowed observation deck, delivered and installed on the ISS by Space Shuttle Endeavour's crew, will host a robotics workstation and has the best view humans in space have ever had of Earth and the stars. The amazing work that's being done on the International Space Station, uh, the not only by our American uh, astronauts, but also uh, our colleagues from Japan and Russia, uh, is just a testimony to uh, human ingenuity, uh, a testimony to extraordinary uh, skill uh, and courage that you guys bring to bear, and uh, is also a testimony to why continued space exploration is so important, and, and is part of the reason why uh, my commitment to NASA uh, is unwavering. Middle school students from Michigan, Florida, North Carolina, and Nebraska, who were in Washington for an engineering competition, and several dignitaries joined President Obama to ask questions of the orbiting astronauts. This is Ruth, coming from North Carolina. Um, what are some of the benefits of exploring space as opposed to exploring other places on Earth? Learning about how we ourselves work and how we can handle changes if we go somewhere very different than what we're used, used to is something that's valuable also on Earth. This was the second call President Obama has made to the International Space Station. He spoke with the crews of STS-119 and Expedition 18 last March. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> New findings by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory in the Andromeda Galaxy have provided a major advance in understanding a type of supernova believed critical to studying dark energy. A zoom into this composite image of Andromeda, also known as M31, shows astronomers that the merger of what's left of two dense stars is the likely cause of many type IA supernovas. Type IA supernovas have been used to measure the accelerated expansion of the universe. Astronomers believe that expansion is being caused by the dark energy they think pervades the universe, and about which they know very little. The telescope aboard NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA, was successfully activated during a January 15th test flight of almost six hours. Engineers examined the telescope's movement and stability to verify that it could remain locked in on a celestial object while the aircraft maneuvers in flight. This successful dry run comes after the telescope's large cavity external door was opened during two test flights in December. These developments paved the way for SOFIA to begin astronomy missions as early as this spring. A new NASA website can help our future explorers and leaders better understand the hows and whys of climate change and what they can do to make our planet more habitable. Called Climate Kids, the new website is the latest companion to NASA's award-winning Global Climate Change website. 
and new techniques. Aimed at students in grades four through six, the multimedia-rich site uses age-appropriate language, games, and humorous illustrations and animations to help break down and understand an important topic most adults find difficult to grasp. Kind of far south for a polar bear, ain't ya? You don't say. Look, my habitat is shrinking, huh. and I obviously fell asleep on the wrong iceberg. What'd you say? Now, Climate Kids can be found at http colon double slash climate dot nasa dot gov slash kids. Godspeed, John Glenn. 48 years ago, Mercury astronaut John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth when an Atlas rocket successfully carried his Friendship 7 capsule into space. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Glenn completed three orbits to usher in a new era of space travel. Oh, that view is tremendous. That eventually led to Apollo astronauts walking on the moon. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.